Don't forget, ko-fi.com slash stop writing alone is a real simple way to show your support for what's going on here week after week. Hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast for writers who are looking for their writing community. I know you want to find readers for your work, but I think your first step is to connect with other writers. That's what we're going to do here in the Stop Writing Alone podcast. We'll do writing prompts and other writing group activities, discover online writing communities, learn how to find local writing groups, or how to make your own. Join us as we explore, learn, and write. Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. On Friday night, I received my contest prompt and word count limit and my deadline for the MYC Midnight Short Story Challenge of 2020. It's round one, and I got a genre that I don't typically write in, mystery, as I shared on the Stop Writing Alone Instagram account, and I am all types of flabbergasted, so... On Tuesday night, I had a write-in at my local Barnes & Noble, and one of my uh, friends who's from the Staten Island Writers Group, but also a part of the uh, Stop Writing Alone community, Sevi, showed up because she's also in the participating in this writing competition. So we both needed to get some writing done, and I'm sitting there, and I can't stop thinking contest, contest, contest. What am I writing? What's that? How am I going to get this done? How the heck am I going to write a mystery? And it hit me. I'm like, whoa, I don't even have my episode ready for this week. I don't even know what I'm going to write about. And Sevi says, well, why don't you, I don't even know what I'm going to write about. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about this week on the Stop Writing Alone podcast. And Sevi says, well, why don't you write about like participating in a writing competition? And I was like, oh, yeah. Duh. <laughs> so that is why the name of this week's episode is how to win with writing contests. Now, I hope you're paying attention to my prepositions because I am not daring to tell you how to win a writing contest because I don't have a one stop sort of rule for that because every writing contest is different. But this is how to win with writing contests, because I do believe that participating in writing contests can give us so much. Now, every single writing contest out there is its own unique challenge and opportunity for writers. But in general, there are certain things that I think we can gain as writers, particularly new writers, writers that are looking to really start to step up and start to enter into the realm of being a professional writer, participating in almost any writing competition can give you some amazing wins. First and foremost, what every single writing competition can provide a writer is the practice of writing on a deadline. Every writing contest has an entry deadline. It, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. They have to say all stories, poems, essays, whatever it is that they're collecting must be in by this date and that's it. And then judging will begin. If you have not participated in a contest before, if you're not working for someone else, if you're simply writing for yourself on a personal blog or someplace like Um, We talk a lot about medium.com where it is really up to you when you post your writing. Even I would argue, even if you are self-published, all of these deadlines that happen in these types of writing are self-imposed. And while some people are very good at sticking to a self-imposed deadline, there is something to be gained on working on someone else's timeline. Really getting the experience of switching into gear for that time that somebody else set up for you is going to challenge you in ways that you you simply can't do yourself. You can't because it's um, 
there's a, an internal flexibility that we always allow ourselves, I think. So to get that added experience of writing on a deadline before you have a relationship with an editor or a publisher, a writing contest is is one of those things that you can get gain that experience from. So to me, already, the second you commit yourself to a writing competition that has a deadline and you do the work, whatever work it is that needs to be done, and you get it submitted on the date of the deadline, you have already won something. You've won a number of things. One is practicing your whole uh, scheduling, how you get your writing done, what you learn in that time while you're trying to crunch and get all the work done in that time is you learn what your true time suckers are. Because if you've only been working on your own schedule, you may be able to work around certain things and say, oh, I'll give myself an extra day or an extra hour. I mean, we don't think, you know, uh, of personal deadlines as like date and time, right? Lots of times it's like, oh, I want to have this done by the end of this month. And there you have it. As long as I wrap up by January 31st sometime, even if it's, you know, before I go to bed, then, um, and oh, maybe I'll stay up really late because I didn't get it done. I'll just make sure I squeeze it in and get it all finished. When you work on an actual professional deadline, it's not like whatever time of day. It's like, all right, printing happens or this thing is going to go out. We need it by a certain time of day. And some people just don't have that um, practice after they leave school, you know? Um, so I think that's, that's really important because when you then have to squeeze in all your work within time frames like that, you start to see what things are wasting your time during the day. And yeah, there's probably social media in there somewhere. <laughs> and sometimes we we will say, uh, oh, just five more minutes, five more minutes. But if you have a deadline that you have to work on, you say, I, I just don't have time for this. I'll do my writing first. I'll get that done first. And then all of a sudden, you're so much more productive than you ever were before. The other thing that I think all writing contests do provide is the experience of writing for an external audience. Again, if we are just writing on our own personal blogs, and I, I could argue for some place like Medium, again, if we are the, the final editor that is deciding what gets published and what does not get published, then really we are still our own audience to a certain extent. The second that there is this other person that is going to read our work and determine what's publishable, what isn't, or in the case of a contest, what's going to move on to the next level or win a prize, now we have to consider the subjective likes and dislikes of someone else when it comes to the story we present. And again, taking a step towards professionalism, that is in fact what every published author needs to do because we are always thinking of our readers. Now, I always say write for yourself first. That is really what is going to drive you, what's going to get you through your stories, what's going to inspire you to find the great idea that your heart wants to write without question. But when it comes time to publish, we do have to then factor in the other eyes that are, you know, we hope will want to see our stories. Writing for a, a writing competition is our first practice in that because if we're writing to win or at least level up in some way, then there's no way to not consider the person that will be reading your story and what were the submission guidelines and what were the things that they were looking for? And, you know, like in the case of this competition, what do they mean by mystery? What are the things that they're going to want to see in a story that is, you know, considered mystery genre? So those types of f slight tweaks in your brain on 
delivering a story or again, a a poem or a personal essay, whatever it is that your contest is looking for, is another step into the professional realm of writing. The final thing that I think every single writing competition provides to you, which again, you're going to say, well, I feel like I always do that, but it is uh, on this whole other level is that you have got to finish something and you have to revise it. You have to, if you are going to submit a short story, you have to finish the whole story. You wouldn't submit something that is just halfway there, three quarters of the way there, or, you know, I still have to fill in something in the middle. I mean, what would be the point? So if you are really going to show up for the competition, then that means you have to write a beginning, middle, and end. You have to get a complete story arc. And sometimes when we're starting out in writing, this is something that writers struggle with. They start on many, many fantastic paths and many, many great ideas, and and they kind of jump from shiny new idea to shiny new idea and never get to the finish line. So if you are struggling with finishing your stories in any way, then I highly recommend committing yourself to a writing competition because, again, you wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare submit something that wasn't finished. So you would be sort of, your hand would be forced to find an ending to the thing that you've decided to write for that competition. And then you may also be forced to revise. You're going to look at something and say, well, it's not exactly right. Or in the case of what always happens to me, I tend to always overwrite. And then if a competition has a word limit, like it does in the case of the competition I'm participating this week, I am, my hand is forced every single time that if I am ever even going to be considered, I have to, at the very least, revise for word count. But of course, what happens? So the second you start rereading and rereading, you're revising everything. And that is fantastic practice because you shouldn't be in the practice of just throwing things up and publishing things that haven't been looked at once, twice, three times, and maybe by, you know, another set of eyes. So those, those things are things that every single writing competition can provide to you. Working on a deadline, that's professional writing 101. So that's fantastic that you can get that experience right away. Um, Writing for an external audience, again, a thing that we don't naturally do for ourselves. It's very, it's very hard to sort of mimic that. So a writing competition is a great experience in doing that and finishing and revising. I mean, I think many people can do that on their own, but if you're struggling with it, I think um, the added, uh, motivation of possibly winning this competition is something that may help you get over the hump of whatever it is. You know, everybody talks about writing block and writer's block, but I think there is a thing as like where people just are blocked against revising things. I think it's it's very common in in new writers and I think it is something that comes out of our education system that we are kind of bred to believe that what we put out the first time is like end game that's it should be assessed as it stands and we're either a great writer or we're not a great writer and this whole idea of revision and rewriting is not something that at least at the time that I went to school was not something that was I don't want to say it wasn't encouraged we simply were not given the time to do it so um in that way, it was sort of discouraged and not part of the norm. So when it came time for me to start taking my writing seriously, I would write something and look at it and reread it and say, well, that's not how it was in my head. And man, I can't believe that. I really thought I had something there. And it it wouldn't occur to me that I could then take that thing and rewrite it into something better. But I think if in the beginning, if I had started participating in writing competitions and I allowed myself the time, I wouldn't, I would say, no, I really want this to win. Let me change this. Let me change that. Again, it sort of forces your hand if you're in it to win it. So 
those are things that all writing competitions provide. But their writing competitions vary so much that there are certain writing competitions that will provide you even more wins for just participating. And one of the um, things that can happen with a writing competition is, again, like the one that I happen to be participating in right now, you could be provided with a writing prompt. And you know me, I love me some writing prompts. Writing prompts are just such a great way to challenge yourself and and really stretch those writing muscles and do something different as I am doing right now. Um, so that is a huge win when you get that opportunity. And of course, it's a thing we can do for ourselves. You see me do it all the time, but it is really fun when it comes from an external source and has this added motivation of like, wow, if you could rise to the challenge of this prompt, you might win something. Very cool. Uh, and the other thing that comes with certain contests is a, a community surrounding it. And you know I love me some writing community. This particular writing contest that I'm participating in does have a whole huge forum, a bunch of forums associated with it because this company runs a number of writing competitions throughout the year. I had done one last year, I do believe, that I spoke to you guys about it. Um, it was the flash fiction contest. Very different in that I was given, you know, much a uh, much smaller word count to write under, and also a smaller amount of time. I had to turn over a story in forty eight hours, whereas this time, um, the story it, the word limit is twenty five hundred words, and was given a solid week to work on these 2,500 words. But the prompts are in the same sort of format that they were the last time. They gave us a genre, they gave us an object, and they gave us a person. And the object and the person both have to figure um, rather prominently in your story. They can't just be like sort of things in the background. So some contests will provide that type of prompt. Some contests will give you access to the community that is participating in the prompt and um, not the prompt, but participating in the competition. This is huge because writing community is so diverse, right? There's so, and I don't just mean diverse as in like how we typically talk about diversity in, in our, um, racial background, our gender, our, you know, all these different things. When I'm talking about diverse writing community, I mean that we are all working at different levels, on different genres, in different fields. So to jump into just hashtag writing community could mean thousands of different things. What is wonderful is when you can really hone in on connecting with people that are in your lane, that are doing similar things to you, that are at the same level as you. The cool thing about a writing contest that provides community for people that are participating is that at least for this shining moment when you are in this competition, you're in it together. These are people that are experiencing the same sort of stresses that you are, the same time constraint, the same deadline, the same prompt if provided. Um, and, and while, yes, I guess we're all in competition, in those moments, there is a camaraderie that is like, it can't be ignored. So it's a really great opportunity to connect with other writers that may or may not be at your same level, but are at least in the same, um, same experience as you in that moment. And I've seen lots of people make connections in these types of communities that grow far beyond that these people, you know, traded stories mid competition. I'll read yours, you read mine. And then they become like critique partners moving forward from there. Very cool. So again, dependent on the writing competition that may be available to you. These super awesome competitions will also provide on top of all of this, some sort of critique or feedback on your story, whether or not you win, place, level up, whatever it is, um, some competitions will provide feedback on your story. This is fantastic, Espe especially 
if participating in this contest is one of your first experiences writing for an external audience. Because if that is the case, that means this is this is the time that you sat down with this other person, this other set of eyes on your mind, and now you get to get feedback from that person. Um, and again, you may not know who they are in the beginning, but you just have an idea of what they were looking for. And now at the end, they can come back and say, you know, where you matched up on that, where you did deliver what they were looking for, where you missed the mark and didn't deliver what they were looking for. And this is all just part of the huge education, um, the educational experience of the writing contest. It is a huge win. And I do have to say, this isn't a sponsorship or at all, but I do really enjoy these NYC midnight competitions for this fact, because the first time I participated, I knew there was going to be feedback, but I didn't know if it would be good or not. You know, I didn't know if it would be helpful in any way. But I really love the way the competition was designed because I got feedback from, I think it was at least three different judges. And they were all anonymous to me. I don't know who they were because they were just codes. You know, it was like Judge A23 had this to say and Judge F42 had this to say. And they all wrote a couple of sentences about the story and some of the things were in agreement some were completely different and I freaking love that my favorite type of critique on my writing is critique that comes from multiple sources at once I love the idea of having a critique partner that can follow along with you and grow with you as you're doing your writing but after a while when you're only working with one other person you both start to get to know each other very well that sometimes it it almost feels like you're not getting that much of a different set of eyes on your work. Someone else that really understands your story so deeply as you do because they've been along the ride for so long. The idea of like a writing workshop or these multiple um, eyes on a piece of work is so wonderful because every bit of critique that you're ever going to get, every bit of feedback that you'll ever get about your writing is always subjective. I mean, it, it can't not be. It's always from someone else through their lens. And that is valuable because that's how readers will see your work, always through their own lens. So what's extremely valuable is to get as many of those opinions at once. I want you to think about sort of critique in this way, right? It's like I am showing up with a glass of dirty water. That is my writing. It's got rocks and pebbles and sand in it and everything. And to get one set of eyes on my work is to get like one cylinder, one cylinder, one colander to pour it through. I pour it through the sieve and it will capture some of the debris in the water. Now, depending on how critical an eye that is, maybe there's giant holes in this colander, maybe there's skinny holes in this colander, but whatever it is, it gets a bunch of the rocks out of my water, but there's still something else in there. The only way that I can get like really clean sort of water, have it is have it just keep going through, go through a different sieve, a different size sieve with holes that are smaller, that are maybe different shaped. I don't know. But the idea is that one person looking at your writing, that same one person looking at your writing, that person's just always going to catch the same stuff. So I love, love, love when you can get multiple eyes on your work. And lots of times writing competitions work this way. It's not really like fantastic if there's a singular judge, you know, then you really are just writing for one person. Um, so I think most of the writing competitions that I have seen have had multiple judges as it is. And like I said, if you get a really, really cool contest, uh, lots of times you'll get that feedback from those judges. With that said, I should say that um, you should expect in those scenarios that the contest en entry won't be free because that's a lot of work. So, um, I, you know, when I first started writing and looking around, I was always looking for like free contests. And I was like, why 
is everybody charging? I just don't get this. And I said, okay, I understand to the point that they need to raise money for like the prize, but I just wasn't putting two and two together. So in case there's anybody out there that's like, why do these people charge? Just imagine having to read all of these contest entries, organize a contest, all the work that goes on behind the scenes. It, it is work and they are providing a service for writers not only in all of these different things that we just discussed, all the, the ways that a writer can win just by participating, but also in whatever the end game is, that prize. And prizes in writing contests are hugely varying. Some are, as I said, monet monetary prizes. You know, a lot, lots of times there is like a, a cash prize at the end for a, a writing contest. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just publication in an anthology or sharing on a site. And I've even seen some writing contests where the prize is feedback on your story. It's nothing more than that because it, they're contests that are designed for beginning writers who are really just trying to grow and learn. And they say, you know, feedback is valuable. So that's going to be the prize. Either way, I highly recommend participating in a writing competition that appeals to you. So there are so many out there. There are large contests, there are small contests. Um, but I think if you do a little search, you can find something that will appeal to what it is that you're looking for. Of course, I love the NYC Midnight because it appeals to my love for writing prompts. They give a writing prompt, they give a time limit, they give a word limit. These are all the different challenges that I love to participate in. I, I don't know if that's for everybody. You know, perhaps you just want to write in your genre. Perhaps you're a romance writer. There's tons of romance contests out there. You just have to um, either look for submission calls or romance story contests. Really, the basics of just Googling um, can get you lots of different um, resources for this. But also Poets and Writers always has um, a list on their site of various ongoing competitions. There's the Writer's Digest magazine has uh, their own short story contest every single year, and that doesn't even have a, um, a genre specific. They actually have multiple prizes for all different genres. And the magazine, The Writer, Writer Magazine, they are currently running a personal essay contest. So literally anything that you want to be writing right now, poetry contests are out there. I do believe that if you have not gone in and tried to enter some sort of writing competition, if you are seeking some type of I don't want to say validation as a writer, but you know, if you find yourself suffering from imposter syndrome as a writer, if you're saying, I don't know if I'm a real writer, I'm just sort of, I like writing and I do it sometimes, but I don't know, I've not been published before. If all of these weird little questions are popping up in your head, I feel like giving yourself this experience of a writing contest is going to help you see all of the things required of a professional writer. And when you rise to each one of those challenges, it's going to be that much harder for you to tell yourself, I'm not sure if I'm a writer. I don't know if I can really do it. Because once you check off these boxes, once you meet a deadline, once you finish your work, revise it, submit it. You write with a with an audience in mind. Those are things that are in every single competition. The minute you do those things, I don't know how you could still show up and say, oh, I don't know if I'm, I'm really doing it. Because if you do all those things, you're doing everything that um, a professional writer does in the most basic form. Of course, there's so much more that goes into being a published author. I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> that's it. That's all it takes. But what I'm saying is that it is the, the framework. If you can do these things for yourself for a writing competition, then 
it is that much easier to envision and then enact what is required to to do to become a published professional author and writer. So I'm going to put in the show notes um, links to where poets and writers list the competitions that they they try to keep a running list of um, competitions that are open right now. Also, I think I have recommended before the Funds for Writers newsletter. That is a fantastic uh, newsletter that has lots of different markets to publish in, um, usually like a, t- a small list of like open submission calls for writing, but there is almost always like a small section of contests that are currently open and, and their requirements, or at least a link to a page that have their requirements. But these are trusted sources for finding good, uh, writing competitions. So I really want you guys to get out there. I want you to jump in. I want you to participate and I would love to hear what your experiences have been with writing competitions. Have you had a, a, a crappy experience? Because I know there are some shady competitions out there. I, I haven't had one of those experiences myself, but I'd be curious to hear um, what has happened. Because for me, it's like all win at this point. Not that I've actually officially won a contest, but I have one personally <laughs> as a writer from participating in um in these competitions. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Is there a competition that you love that you'd love to recommend to people? Do you run a competition yourself uh, on any of your um arenas that you're in right now? Um, but that's pretty much it for this week. I want you guys to get out there. I want you to participate. This week's writing prompt on the Envy Rivera YouTube channel coming out on Friday will be inspired by the NYC Midnight uh, contest that I'm participating in. So if you want to sort of try your hand at mimicking that experience, I will do my best to provide this Friday for you. But otherwise, that is all I have for you this week. I will talk to you next week. Thank you as always for listening and for anybody out there in the short story challenge 2020 in NYC Midnight dealing with a genre either they love or they've never written before like me. Best of luck, happy writing, and I'll find you in the forums. Have a great week, everyone. Talk to you next week. Hey guys, it's me, Nicole, and it has occurred to me that my natural groove, my life, my life's work is really coaching. It's the place I lit up most when I was in my educational career. And at every turn, when I have the opportunity to speak one-on-one with people in the Stop Writing Alone community, in other writing communities, in my own writing group, And in all these different creative communities that I've been involved in, it makes my day. It makes everything worthwhile. So I'm going to take 2020 and I'm going to step into this calling. And I really want to take the next steps that it'll take to be the coach that you need. If you are interested in being one of my first coaching clients, please write me an email at stopwritingalone at gmail.com and say in the subject line, I want in, so that we can have a conversation about what that means, what you need, what I can do, and how we can make this happen. So if it's something you are ready for, if you want in, just write to me today at stopwritingalone at gmail.com, subject line, I want in, and tell me why. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Stop Writing Alone podcast wherever you're listening to this episode today. Then connect with us on Facebook at Stop Writing Alone Facebook page or in the Stop Writing Alone with Nicole Rivera Facebook group. Check Instagram or Twitter where I'm at NV underscore Rivera to find links to our email newsletter. 